Welcome to L3 AI. I'm here today um, from the Raza team with Christoph and Florian from Batium. We're going to be talking about testing, everyone's favorite subject. Um, and so without further ado, uh, rather than introduce the speakers myself, I'll give each of them the opportunity to, to tell us a little bit about who they are. And um, I guess the question for me would be like, why are you working on the problem you're working on? What what does the world need that Batium is solving, right? There's a lot of people in the conversational AI space. There's a lot of companies doing things. What is Batium doing that you feel chatbot developers need? Okay, cool. Hi, also from our side, exploring and me here. Um, unfortunately, I only have coffee, he has a beer. <laughs> but well, coming directly to your question, why does the world need Batium? Um, so, well, Considering chatbots, virtual assistants, or conversational AI in general, um, all these things are software, yeah, and software needs to be tested. There is no way around it. Um, and we see now after the crisis, companies are even um, investing more in digitalization. Yeah? Going a few years back, maybe we were talking about Selenium for testing websites, or Appium as an industry standard for automating mobile apps and Botium now is more or less just the next logical step um, for bots. And uh, this is, by the way, also um, where the name comes from, as a lot of people are asking this. Yeah? So consider Appium, standard for testing apps, Botium, it is for bots. So this will be my answer to this question. And Florian? Mm. Yes, I'm just drinking beer here. Um, Yes, uh, I'm the main developer of Botium, and um, well, when uh, doing this, when starting with starting with Botium a few years ago, there simply was no way of testing a chatbot. Yeah? So I just um, programmed something uh, myself, posted it to GitHub, and uh, I got a lot of feedback on it. Yeah? So there definitely was the need for something to which helps you in automating the testing of the chatbot. Yeah? And that's, um, the, at this time, the project was named TestMyBot, but we renamed it to Botium for the reason that uh, Christoph just explained. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe you have to add there our very personal story. Yeah? So we met each other, it's now four or five years ago, I guess, in playing in the same rock band. Yeah? So both guys coming from IT, he was always the the core developer, I was coming from test and test automation and then the bias thing happened. Yeah? So bots were coming up, Florian started to implement bots. He asked me, how can we do testing? Um, then test my bot was there. We won the first con startup contest and then the rest is more or less history. Nice. Well, welcome to L3 AI. I'm Kai, product manager at, at Rasa. Uh, and I guess we can jump into the first real question, which is, Christoph, you mentioned that conversational AI is software and software needs to be tested. From kind of the more traditional web app, mobile app testing and best practices, what can we learn, what can we bring to um, conversational AI in your mind? Yeah, so of course testing conversational AI um, is very different, but um, one learning is for sure that uh, also in testing conversational AI we need to do a mixture of, uh, or a combination of manual and automated testing. Yeah? So um, test automation, at least in my opinion, will never completely replace um, manual testing. Um, but uh, also there, in addition, it is very important uh, to test bots end-to-end, -end, for example. And when, when, uh, when we are talking end-to-end, -end, and this is going um, a little bit uh, further than, than uh, what Raza is offering, when we are talking about end-to-end -end testing, it's testing on, against the browser farm if the bot is operating on, on websites, yeah, or against a real device cloud if the bot is operating on mobile devices, or even testing against a physical device like an Echo Dot from Amazon when we're talking to an Alexa or something. Yeah. So, but uh, also there, end-to-end -end testing was there before, and it is also important um, when we're talking about um, bots. And one thing that is also coming from traditional testing that is still very valid is fast feedback. Yeah? So you permanently need 
um, fast and continuous feedback for your stakeholders. And this can be only achieved, to be honest, by using test automation. There is no other way of, of, of testing a few hundred thousand conversations in your, in your test or data set um, with every build that your developers are doing it manually. Now, you need to do this automated um, to get permanent feedback in your pipeline for your stakeholders. Yeah, and of course, also non-functional testing, like we had it for traditional testing. These things are all still valid. Uh, you need also to test your conversation with AI for performance. You need to do stress load testing, security testing. I mean, in, especially in Europe, GDPR testing is a big thing. So, so this stuff is all there. And on top, we have these new challenges that conversational AI brings in. Gotcha. Is there anything you would add, Florian? Yeah. Um, no, not really. I personally think that, um, yeah, <clears throat> when starting with all of this uh, chatbot stuff, the problem was that there is a totally new vocabulary there. Yeah? So, um, where some years ago a software tester um, only had to know what a website is or how to how to operate a mobile phone. Yeah, now the tester itself. Um, has to learn a totally new vocabulary. Yeah? He has to have a basic knowledge about NLP analytics, about statistics, about math. So the tester, the test engineer now needs um, a totally, a, I would say, an expanded set of skills. Yeah? And um, yeah. I mean, maybe also to add here once again, um, the cool thing is that this brings the role of a test engineer to another level. Yeah? So I remember 20 years ago, maybe testers were seen as people clicking somewhere buttons. Yeah? Like, well, let's call them a dump crawler maybe. Yeah? Um, nowadays, uh, or let's say a test engineer um, that is able to deal with conversational AI is a very skilled guy, to be honest. Yeah, as Florian mentioned, there, are, there is this new vocabulary, there is a lot of maps behind uh, things are, are complicated yeah? and, and the role test engineer is, is, has changed. Yeah? And I also uh, deeply believe that those old test engineers who are not willing to adopt, um, they will have a problem in the future yeah? if you don't um, learn this new stuff. If you're saying, oh, I still click for the rest of my life some buttons on websites. Gotcha. And so you might see this question coming, but the flip side of it, what is different about testing chatbots, testing conversational AI that maybe you don't have to think about when you're testing web applications or mobile applications? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on, on, on top of this new skill set that you need, um, it's definitely, I would say, the size of test sets and data sets. Yeah? So you have to consider um, that people can ask about everything and looking uh, on, on or considering our community and the feedback we get, we see that their customers asking about everything. Yeah? So there is the, the finance part and people are asking for the weather or something. Yeah? So of course, uh, this bot doesn't have to give a sufficient answer to, to uh, the weather situation in Vienna, for example, but it never should end up with, sorry, I don't understand, or even in the worst case, crash and, and offer some confidential banking data or whatever. And this, this sounds so weird, but we see this happening out there. Um, and yeah, as, as people can and they do ask everything, your data sets, your training and test sets um, are in theory infinitely big. Yeah? So in, in, in traditional software testing, um, we were talking a lot about test coverage and so on. Yeah? So um, this opens a new level. What, which test coverage can you reach when, when the test sets are infinitely big? Yeah? And um, also to add here, um, in traditional software testing, it was less the quantity of tests you are doing, it was more the quality of your tests you are doing that made it or had a big impact. Yeah? I'm talking about conversation that I, of course, the how you do it, the, the content of your tests is also very important. But in addition, also the quantity, yeah? the more tests you do, the more training data you do, the more your bot will understand. Yeah? And this, this is the main goal, in, in our opinion, of every chatbot, yeah? to understand what your user wants to have or to do. Or to have. Gotcha. And something that you said specifically that I want to jump on is, is this idea of training data, right? You're using oftentimes machine learning 
or at least natural language understanding, maybe even dialogue management or other aspects of your assistant? Like, how does that change testing compared to applications that maybe don't use machine learning? And how do you evaluate those models? Mm -hmm. And, uh, this is one part of the functional testing that can be done with bot yeah? We're testing the NLP performance. We designed a whole new product around it with the Botium coach, which is part of Botium box. Um, yes, but um, the test engineers, they absolutely need some basic knowledge about machine learning and about designing test sets properly and to understand the output of the model. Yeah? And of course, they need, uh, in addition, so only testing the NLP performance is not enough for a whole test suit. Yeah? We need to also test the conversational flow. So evaluating the machine learning model is only part of the whole story. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe to add here, as Florian mentioned, there is this new botium coach. Um, it will be launched in a week and I heard something that also someone from Raza will be speaking there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not official yet, but maybe now you can't reject the invitation anymore. <laughs> this was the end. Yeah, <laughs> <come on. laughs> uh, sorry for that. Cool. Um, so I guess recently the, the CTO of Raza, uh, founder Alan Nickel, like, the idea of, of uh, conversation-driven development, which has a number of principles. He's going to talk about it at, at L3 AI. You might have already talked about it. Um, and one of those principles in his mind is something that you guys work on every day, which is test. And he described it as, as using end-to-end -end tests of your assistant because professional machines don't ship applications. When you go to production, you should have dozens of end-to-end -end tests. And in your case, <laughs> you were talking about thousands, right? Maybe you're even more ambitious. And then kind of taking it even a step further and using your integration deployment to ship your updates reliably. Um, I guess from your perspective, what resonates with you about um, testing being one of like the six pillars, the six principles that Alan has identified um, as part of conversation driven development? Yeah, um, so maybe to add here, where, where does this number come from when, when we're talking about hundreds, thousands of conversations and so on? So yeah, if you consider, um, let's say, a, 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 a mid layer jackpot handles a few hundred intents, yeah. Um, and behind every intent, you usually have maybe a few hundred utterances or use examples and so on. So if you multiply this and, and look at the number of combinations, then you end up in, in thousands of, of test cases there. And so this, this is how we get there. And this is also pretty usual when you look um, into the data sets of our community. Um, yeah, considering conversation-driven development and testing. Uh, in addition to the NLP analytic-based testing that Florian mentioned before, um, of course, we are concentrating highly on the whole conversation flow test. Yeah. Um, we are searching there for the whole context of the conversation. Um, we are checking all conversation steps, uh, if they are correctly processed and so on. And of, of course, including their fancy stuff, rich text, cards, carousel, everything you could um, imagine and think of. And, and of course, there you also have to mention that the, the context needs to be preserved during the whole test day. Yeah? Um, but this form of testing is where, where everything started. Yeah? So um, we started with Botchim not at the point of checking for NLP performances or analytics. Yeah? This is something we added afterwards, but we started with testing conversation flows because um, this is as close as possible to your end user experience. Yeah? Your end users will have conversations with your chatbot. They will talk to it voice-based or text-based, um, but this is how they will interact with your bot. And this is where we started. Yeah? Um, and the whole NLP analytics stuff is more or less um, coming now one year later, and, and it, it's a strong community request, to be honest. Yeah? Um, we are very community driven, as Raza is. We also started open source and still have and will always have um, our core product open source. Um, and therefore, we have a very big community, and we are taking all this feedback. And one feedback was guys, the conversation flow testing is great. But what about weak intents, confidences, confusion matrices? Can you give us some statistics and analytics? And, and this is what, uh, what we have added now. Awesome. 
Yeah, a lot of the users I talk to in in the community, right, probably pre getting to bot team, they often tell me that when I say how do you test, they'll say, oh, I talk to the assistant, meaning, and, and they'll even say that I test the assistant, right, and they'll just make a change and they'll type something to the bot and see that the bot now responds the way that they wanted it to, and the change works, and they'll be happy. Your guys' mind, like, why? Why does that not come up? Or at what point does that? Uh, no longer work. So maybe you, hmm? maybe you at this point. Yeah. So uh, why does this not cut? You know, um, the basic challenge is to make uh, the bot fit for production use. Yeah, and um, just quickly checking if a change works is not. Uh, it's not enough. Yeah, in machine learning. The models are not overseeable, yeah? not even for the developers themselves. Yeah? There can be side effects and a totally different intent that you just um, worked on. Yeah? So you have to test all the intents every time. Yeah? Uh, maybe there are um, 100 ways of greetings that should trigger your chatbot. Yeah? But um, when changing one of them, you have to make sure that the chatbot doesn't forget another one. Yeah? So. Um, just doing a quick uh, one-shot check is it's not enough. Yeah? It's um, it's ridiculous yeah? to uh, to say testing to this approach. Yeah? <laughs> you have to test everything, and you cannot do this manually. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Completely agree. Glad to glad to hear it. <laughs> Many users will will listen to that and they'll say yes, that's great, but. And the next thing I hear is I want to do testing. I want to actually create tests, but I don't have time for it now. It's something we'll do when we go to production. It's something that we'll do later on. Why do you think you should introduce testing into a work, work, your workflow for building an assistant earlier than later, right? <laughs> Why do you think you should do it, I'm assuming, from the start? What is your perspective on that? Yeah, I mean, this is also a question I'm answering, I think, since 20 years in, in the whole testing area, yeah? Um, when should we start to test? And, and, and um, so the, the answer didn't change in the last 20 years. Yeah? Um, start as early as possible, to be honest. Yeah? Um, when we're talking about conversational AI, this is even more important compared to um, traditional software. And it's, um, you should really force this idea of shifting stuff to the left, yeah? considering how is the ICT pipeline, um, where you start on the left, and on the right end of production. Yeah. So these these times when we were doing, for example, non-functional testing like pen test or something, only uh, one week before we go into production. So these times are young. Yeah. And this is exactly what we are also emphasizing on the whole development in Botium. Yeah. So we have included continuous security testing at the beginning of your pipeline. Yeah. We have shifted performance testing to the left. Um, all this stuff, GDPR testing, doing continuously. Yeah? Because um, I mean, I don't want to to uh, come up here with numbers and so on, but we all know this graph of, of fixing costs of bucks you find. Yeah? Of course, uh, they, they are growing exponentially when you're going to the right. Yeah? In the worst case, you end up in production. There is this, this graphic it costs you 1,000 times as much compared to if you would have fixed it in the early development stage. Yeah. So the clear answer is start as early as possible. And I mean, this, this is also the reason why we have built um, around our open source blockchain core, this blockchain box, because this really gives you the possibility um, to more or less set up a scalable testing environment in, in a few minutes. Yeah. So this argument of we don't have the time is not really valid. Anymore. Let's go gotcha. So if you start in the beginning and you create these tests and you're kind of rapidly iterating on your assistant, how do you keep them up to date? Like I was just talking to a user the other day that says, every time I, I change my stories in Raza, I need to change my tests. Like how do you think about that? How do you make sure that you're keeping your tests up to date with your assistant? Well, test sets are not static. Yeah? Testing or uh, designing test sets, writing tests is a part of everyday work for a software developer. Yeah? So when you're uh, introducing new features into your assistant, of course, you have to invest the time 
to um, compose the tests for them. Yeah? Of course, um, there is some technology which uh, makes this easier. Yeah? For example, with uh, Otium Box, you can sync the training data from ASA with the test data in Otium. Yeah? But this is only a part of the whole story. Yeah? So the main issues here that you're dealing with different file formats, you have to merge the data and so on. Yeah? But um, this does, it doesn't help. You have to, um, to establish a culture, a development culture, to always um, keep the tests up to date with the, with the application. Yeah? But this shouldn't be a, a real issue nowadays because every developer is used to writing tests, every serious developer. Yeah, I think one, one important word that Florian said is culture, you know? testing and the whole agile and the approach companies are living today. Um, this is about culture and I remember um, when I started to develop, we already had these basic rules like by adding a new class, you have to add your unit test yeah? and, and it's more or less the same culture. You, know? you add a new feature in your assistant, you add new tasks. That's it. Nice. And so something that you guys have said throughout that you've mentioned is this idea of continuous integration, CI, for people in the audience that maybe aren't as familiar with testing and automated testing. Like, what is that and why is it important to set up and um, how do you think about, about that in terms of building a scalable testing um, approach? Yeah, so um, considering the big players out there, I'm not going to name them, but um, they are deploying a few thousand times to production every day. Yeah? So it's pretty obvious that it is impossible to do their manual testing or have an operation team somewhere sitting and shifting a Java package to a server or something. Yeah? Therefore, we have um, these agile mindsets running agile teams and CICT setups. Yeah? And I'm um, just a, a typical, a normal customer uh, with the normal size that we have, is already doing close to 100 builds a day in their development team, yeah? ending up um, with around about 1,000 builds then in a sprint when we're talking about uh, weekly sprints. Yeah? Um, and with every build, you should at least run some smoke tests. Yeah? And there we are once again at the point where testing comes in. Yeah? Consider testing one of these data sets we talked before with. 10,000, well, let's say only 1,000 conversations inside, yeah? testing those 1,000 times a week. So this is just impossible to do it manually. And if you start calculating how much time this, this would cost you, you end up just, it is impossible. Yeah? So the thing is, um, try to have a major CICD pipeline in place, uh, trigger tests with every build you do, um, do the testing through your full pipeline and what we usually success, uh, suggest is to, to test on different stages and in different test environments. You start on a development environment where probably some stuff that you are usually connected to is marked. Um, tests succeed there with Botium, which you deploy automatically to your next stage, which is probably an integration test environment. Yeah. You run uh, maybe a bigger scope of tests, you start to do end-to-end -end testing there maybe already, and if this is fine, shift to your user acceptance test environment. Um, there you do the, the fancy stuff that comes with bottom box, like continuous security, performance testing, and so on. And if everything is cool, you can even deploy automatically to production. Yeah? Um, yeah, it, I mean, the, the whole reason behind it is to have such, such kind of serious testing in place. Um, when we're talking about chatbots, we're talking about, um, let's call it an interface that has direct contact to your customers. Yeah? There is no, let's call it additional firewall in between that somehow protects you from bad quality. Yeah? So if your bot is failing, your customers will immediately see it. And we are living in, in nowadays in this culture where your bot fails and 10 minutes later um, you will have a shit storm or something. And to be honest, um, I think it's okay that these shit storms are there because um, it is not okay to deliver a bad quality bot. Definitely. Uh, so I think we have time for one more question. And I, I think I might know the answer to this one, but I'll ask it anyways. <laughs> yeah, about developer. I don't know much about DevOps. I want to test my assistant. 
how do I do it? What is the best way? How you guys do it? Well, um, a very basic uh, DevOps pipeline would be um, just uh, using the Windows scheduler to trigger a task which uh, itself triggers Potium and runs some automated tests. Yeah? This is a very basic pipeline, I would say, but it's not, of course, it's not really scalable. Yeah? But um, you don't have to be a DevOps engineer to set up a Jenkins server somewhere. Yeah? This is uh, just running Docker Compose up and they have a, a Jenkins server there. Yeah? So um, doing this stuff with the Windows scheduler maybe is um, worth a try at the very beginning of a project, but at least at a certain point, um, you have to run a real uh, pipeline product like Jenkins or Bamboo. But this is really no, no magic. You have to have the pipeline in place. And um, you don't have to be a DevOps engineer to use those tools. Yeah? And uh, what your box will integrate with all of these tools like a charm. Yeah? So um, yeah, you don't have to be a DevOps engineer to create a scalable testing setup, I would answer. The tools nowadays are so simple to use and to set up that um, you can do it within minutes. Huh? I mean, the, 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 uh, uh, how we did it or tried to make it easier for our users is um, with every test project you have within Botium Box, it will automatically generate a webhook for you that you can call. Yeah? So no matter what you use, if you use some kind of scheduler or a platform orchestration tool, and all of those are able to simply call the webhook. Yeah? Or, I mean, you could even paste this webhook in a browser window, hit enter, uh, and Botium Box would run the tests on the other side and deliver back a result. Yeah? So it couldn't get way much easier to run. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. I hope everyone learned something. I definitely did. I believe we'll have some time for a few questions here. Um, so I think I will turn it over to, to the audience for questions. And once again, thank you guys. You're welcome.